All right, this Raw show on Monday night was a go-home show because SmackDown has been taped for the Crown Jewel show. And, uh, man, I don't know. Maybe it's just this week, but I watched this show, and it was like, it's Groundhog Day. I just see the same, same old, thing I, happening I was thinking, over and over and I was, over I was again. thinking the same thing when I was watching it. Yes. It's like, same old, same old. I mean, it's like... It's like every show is Judgment Day against Sami Zayn, Cody Rhodes, and, uh, you know, Jey Uso and a big brawl at the end and, you know, a bunch of stuff there. I mean, the only different thing is, you know, that, that comedy Halloween match, which um, I don't know. I got I mean, something to say about that, but. But, I mean, the thing with those matches, it's like it's like one of the things I think is, is, is um, you know, with wrestling is that like on Halloween and Thanksgiving, it feels like every company has this need to do a Halloween or a Thanksgiving gimmick on their show. And probably, what do you say, eight times, nine times out of ten, they suck? Actually, no, because in fact, we've seen four this week, and uh, and two of them were good, and two of them sucked. And, uh, you know, the thing with having a Halloween-style match is... Like, if you're going to do a Halloween-style match and you're going to try to actually do... Like, the the NXT, the, the opening match when they did the uh, Devil's Playground match. Like, that was a good match. It, were, it was two good workers having a good match, and there were some gimmicks outside to make it a hardcore match, and there was absolutely nothing wrong with it. Yeah, but that... that, that, that okay, that was, that was a different type of thing. I'm talking about the pumpkins on the head and stuff. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you don't have to do that. Well, that's I don't know point. why. I don't know that's why. That's my point. That's my point. Yeah, my but point the point is, is you can do a... Ho- my point is you can do a holiday match. Go ahead and knock yourself out do a Halloween match. I saw two of them on, on Halloween Havoc last week that were good. But you don't have but to do a stupid but, one. But, but those weren't Halloween matches. Those Devil's just... Playground at Halloween Havoc was absolutely 100% a Halloween match. That's what that was. The, the show was called There's Halloween that... Havoc. They spun a wheel for spooky matches. Spooky matches, but not Halloween theme. I mean, you can do... Devil's they wore Play... costumes. They do... They... They're going to wear costumes they did, they, they this did, week? They did do they did. Yes. Costumes. That's true. That's true. You just have they to did. do it right. Just do a good match. But it wasn't... It not wasn't... a stupid match. But the whole point is, is that they always feel the need for the comedy match. Well, yes. And the comedy matches often fall flat. And I mean, the same thing Thanksgiving week, because Thanksgiving week, we always have the food fights, which sometimes are entertaining, but usually are redundant and not. And, um, you know, I, I don't know what the, 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 the idea is, is that you have to do these matches that like, again, like the, uh, the AEW match, even though I know the crowd was pretty into the last couple of minutes with the pumpkins and everything. I think that was more. They were in the last thirty seconds with the pumpkins. Yeah, the but thing with that, that match, point, though, they were not in. Okay, it. but you know the thing with that match is, is it it really wasn't the Halloween theme that made the match bad. It was just like they just didn't have a good match. And in the but in the Natalia Chelsea Green match, I just thought that um, the gimmicks got totally in the way of the match, and it just seemed like a, you know. I mean, the, the, it was designed to be a train wreck, hoping that you would not turn off the TV because you could not tear yourself away from how terrible this thing was. They they've done this since the the late nineties. It's yeah. like I every I thought now the, then you got to have one. I thought the costuming was kind of cute, um, you know, with with um, Chelsea Green and Piper Niven as Piper as as, uh, as uh, Jim Neidhart was actually the highlight of that whole match. Yeah, yes. but you know, like the uh, the power bomb and the the. Uh, uh, whatever. Actually, that probably should have been finished. But the, you know, like again, like some of the stuff. Um, the Nikki Cross spot actually was 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 pretty well done, though. I will say that. You know, when she's out there as a zombie and everything like that, she did a pretty good job. You know, like she she definitely looked like she was a statue, and not the real Nikki Cross in a lot of ways. So I thought that was pretty well done. But just watching the TV of of the way it was done, um, you know, I I don't know. It didn't didn't do anything for me. Well, the show opened up with, you'll never guess, Rhea, Dom, and JD come out, and they talk about how they run Raw, and then Sammy came out, and he talked about how he wanted to fight the Judgment Day until he was dead, and then Rhea said that was silly, and she wanted Damian Priest versus Sammy, which for all I know may be a first-time match, but it felt like I've seen this match a thousand times. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's it's, it's the basic offshoot of everything that, yes. they, that they always do. And then uh, Dom said they should teach him a lesson. Ricochet hit the ring, and that led to Dom versus Ricochet. But, man, all I know is between this and then everything they did on the show, it's like this Saturday, 
something needs to happen. Either either Damien needs to cash in or Drew needs to win the title from Seth. Like, we need something new after Crown Jewel because I've seen the same show now one too many times. It never has really bothered me until today when I felt like there, I'm there, watching a rerun today. There was there was a show a couple weeks ago where I just felt the same way, where it's just like, uh, you know, same, same type of thing, you know, same type of run-ins. You know, the same everything. I mean, I thought the show itself, for the most part, was... It was it fine. It was fine. It was fine. But, I, but it was a fine show I've seen 50 times. I'm ready for something new. Yeah. So Maybe it was just... Dom versus Ricochet as the opener. And uh, you'll never guess what happened in the finish. Rhea and JD took the ref. Ricochet laid out JD. Dom rolled him up, put his feet on the ropes, and pinned him. The hmm. same generic, totally lame interference finish that we've seen a thousand times. That's WWE. And WWE's Ricochet. got the two, the two, the two finishes: the one where the heels cheat to win like that, and the one where the faces uh, prevail in the same situation. Ricochet attacked him afterwards. Goes for the six thirty. Rhea pulls Dom to safety. So then we had Alpha Academy with Ivy Nile versus uh, the Creeds. And I'm sorry, the Creeds with Ivy versus Elf Academy. Well, that was uh, that was something new. The Creeds, I, the Creeds were new, and 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 Gargano and Ciampa was new. I very much uh, enjoyed this match. I thought that everybody, except I will say one thing. So at the very beginning of the match, it's Chad and Julius, and they start doing amateur wrestling, and they're wrestling around, and it's great. And Julius grabs him, and he does his kettlebell get up with Chad in a vertical suplex position. They switched off the vertical suplex. Like, everything's going great. And then they tag in Brutus and Otis. They had problems. I thought, this can't possibly go wrong. It's just two big dudes. And they could not get anything. Like, they got totally lost. And I was like, oh, man, this ain't good. They were were in different pages. And so they tagged out. And the funny thing is they weren't even doing anything complicated. It was like. No, it was just like bounce off the ropes. They just, it felt like they just didn't, they didn't feel right with each other well it was like they couldn't figure out like there was a spot where one of them was supposed to like run to the buckle to do something but like they both thought that they were the ones supposed to do that so they both ran to an opposite buckle and then when they hit they just stood there because they both realized wait a second the other guy i who's what so finally they uh they get some heat and then at the end for the the comeback and the big moves i mean the crowd really enjoyed this match and they did a big spot where Otis hit the world's strongest slam on Brutus. And then Julius broke it up with a 450. And then Chad did a moonsault onto the entire pile, which got a huge pop, let everybody be in down. And then Maxine got into a brawl with Ivy on the outside. Dozawa tried to break it up, so Ivy gave him a German because they wanted to put over that she's tough. And then Julius got a blind tag, put Otis on his shoulders. Brutus hit the Brutus bomb. And they pinned them. The Creeds won. And no, they, should, they had to win. Or they should have I mean, they, yeah, they had to win. They had to win. Everybody so, I mean, shook you know, hands afterwards. It was uh, great. It was good. It was Yeah, it was well done. The interesting thing is, is when they work in NXT, they do so much more than they did here. It was very much, you could see that the idea, and I'm not saying good or bad, that the idea here is, is we've got, three or four spots that we want that we want you to do and and you know the 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 this one basically the ones that you went through and the rest of it was just wrestling and that's fine you know and there is an argument when you do less you make the less mean more and i think that's what the deal is well there's another here. difference too dave and that is that when they are in nxt i mean they get their match a week in advance and they got a whole week to hang out and go over the match and and do everything they're going to do well, that's not happening on the main roster. They show up, and uh, you're going to wrestle these guys. You got a uh, you know a couple hours to put the match together, and so this is what you get on the main roster as opposed to having a week to put it together in developmental. Yeah, I still enjoyed it a lot. No, I thought that they did a good. I thought they did a good job. It was longer than I expected. You know, I mean, and and more back and forth. I thought it'd be more explosive, but the fact is that it worked. You know, and I mean, the the key was is that. You know, it was it was important though for uh, Gable and Otis. To, I mean, to um, for Gable and Otis to put him over. Um, I think that uh, if Gable and Otis would have won, it really would have been a flat debut. But uh, you know, again, it's where they go and what they do next. You know, if they 
start beating them, then, you know, it won't, then they won't amount to anything. But I don't think that's going to happen I mean, because I know that, like, you know, Julius Creed is one of those guys that they are very, very high on. They've been high on him since, since he debuted. You know, I mean, even before he had his first match, people down there were telling me, you know, he's going to be a, a main roster main eventer. You know, from, and then, you know, and I mean, he's got very unique athletic ability. Um, both of them do. But he, him more than, than the brother of just being able to do, you know, incredible agility and strength things that kind of blow your mind. And then the thing that they had to get to is where they're good enough to do the rest of the match. So, um, and they're, they're, you know, it wasn't a perfect debut, but um, I mean, it's certainly good enough. You know, Bruce, yeah, Bruce did have, Bruce had problems. There was a few r rough spots early, uh, but the match itself was good. You have Max Caster on Wednesday was giving MGF unwelcome physical groping. Daddy asked him to call himself Mr. Ass for decades now. And then you have the Iron Savages. All these men want to do, in their own words, is eat their opponent's asses. Yeah. Anthony Bones is the straightest guy in this match. Tony Storm also ate ass. What's going on here? Sky Blue has a very... Um, Thick. Thank you. Uh, backside, of course, Tony's the same way. So they had to one-up that somehow. Kira Hogan, well, she fits the bill. Kira is running wild, and Tony cuts her off by eating her ass. This is the kinkiest wrestling show I've seen in a long, long time. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.